pleasant good day to all of my YouTube fans and supporters across the globe. To those of you who are new and listening and viewing, we encourage you after viewing this video to immediately become a subscriber. Those of you who have been ongoing supporters, we thank you for all of the support that you have given us. And as you have recognized in our last two videos, we are in nature and somehow as I stand in nature, I'm feeling a fire bubbling in my belly because being at one with nature, as I said in a previous video, is good for mental, physical, emotional health. Because of that, I, I guess I am talking to you as I am speaking with you. Thank, thanks to the blessings of nature that all of us must incorporate more in our lives. Because there are many stresses that we are confronted with. And by spending time in nature, at least it helps us to have a clear and calm mind. So as usual, we, we welcome you to today's presentation. And... Um, my usual salutation at the beginning of the presentation. So I, Emo Ramises Bakari, your psychologist and life coach from the magical community of Point Forty, speaking to you today from the pristine and majestic Maracas Valley nested in the valleys surrounded by the El Tucuch Peaks. And as we know, the El Tucuch Peaks are the second highest mountain peaks in Trinidad and Tobago. And being in the valley or being in any valley, we, we encourage you, being by the riverside, incorporate more of that in your life. So it is our intention to increase your self-esteem, to increase your self-confidence, to help you develop clear thinking and help you develop even clearer plans. And this will be done through coaching, through counseling, through teaching, through, through writing, through motivational speaking and feature addressing. Because you, yes, you are deserving of becoming the best possible versions of yourself and we are prepared to partner with you in 2023 to ensure that this becomes a reality. So welcome once again to another YouTube presentation. So as usual, we before going into the, the full presentation, we will do our motivational words. And the motivational word to you, is no matter what situation you are confronted with, keep calm. I repeat, no matter what situation you are confronted with, please keep calm. But when you keep calm, you can have a clearer picture of what is before you. If you become flustered or overwhelmed, the complexity of the situation becomes extremely more complex and you can end up in a very difficult position. So no matter what you are confronted with, keep calm, trust in the divine, and act appropriately. So welcome once again to another YouTube presentation. And the topic for today is very pertinent to all of us citizens of the world at this point in the world's development. And the topic is, how to survive in trying economic times. I repeat, how to survive in trying economic times. Now this is a question to the very rich, it doesn't matter. But to the average citizen, to the average global citizen, it's an ongoing concern. It's a concern where many people really are not clear in their mind because their situations are such. When you look at different reports from the different world agencies, you are seeing that in many countries, people survive on less than $2 US per day, less than a dollar US per day. I mean, in 2023, in a world rich with so, so many resources, that is a tragedy, tragedy beyond measure. But nonetheless, where there is life, where there is a will, where there is commitment, where there is a, a clarity of mind, certainly possibilities abound. And there are very, very, very simple things that we can do. And one of the first recommendations I made is the very motivational word that I, I said to you, that no matter what the situation you are confronted with, stay calm. So, if your liabilities exceed your assets, you know you are in a serious debt situation. 
But if you could stay calm, understand, quantify what they are, and think about what can be done, whether on your own or through the help of others, that is a much better approach than just being overwhelmed by the situation and worrying about it. Of course, you want a solution, but having calmness, having clarity of mind is a first step. So that's the first recommendation I am making to you. Recently in Nigeria, the, the government before the present one had pushed through a piece of legislation where they were trying to introduce a total digital currency. Now apparently the decision wasn't well thought out, taking into consideration the, the long use of the paper money, the, the culture of the people, uh, challenges in some sectors in terms of um, being technical savvy, etc. And it all ended up when they had to reverse the decision. And during the time when they were trying to make that transfer, which obviously was not given sufficient time, people had to find creative ways because during that period, the traditional Naira was outlawed as legal tender and people had to survive. What did they do? People had to barter. And we know bartering from way back, you know, exchanging something that you own in, in, in lieu of a service that can be offered. I am saying we can certainly use that because sometimes you may need something, you don't have the cash, but you may have an item that the other person needs, you can certainly make that exchange. You may, you may, need, you may need food, right? Another person may have a wide array of food available and you could provide labor or some form of service to them. Certainly, that is something that you can do and it doesn't require no technical training to do that. In other ways, you know, those of us of little means or some means, we can pool resources together and buy in bulk. And if we buy in bulk with, with a heart and a commitment to help our fellow men, everybody can benefit because the bulk buying, you will get things cheaper, you will get perhaps bargains here and there, and everyone can get something. So bulk buying is an option. There is no technicality involved there that people can pursue, bulk buying, right? We can also, of course, look at a deeper solution, right? In that a fundamental thing for the economic growth of any country is having uh, most of its citizens employed, right? Having projects by government that drive economic activity. Because the more projects you have where people can be employed, is the more the economy will spin, will spin. The more people have access to an income, is the more they'll be able to spend, to spend money and drive economic activity. Right? So I'm saying this to you to let you know that there's a role for government in terms of creating an enabling environment, right? Because for economic development to really proceed, we need to have a proper infrastructure in any country, a proper road network. With bad roads, people take longer to reach from one point to the other. With pot, pot, pothole-ridden roads, it damages vehicles, it impedes economic activity. With a lot of traffic congestion, of course, the wheels of the economy slows because slow down because of you know, you know, poor um, speed of movement from one point to the other. Poor road network. We, we need to have a proper road network. We need to have uh, water available on an ongoing basis. As we know, water drives domestic use, industrial use, and it is fundamental to life. It's fundamental to industry, right? In terms of refining projects, you need cooling systems for water. In terms of any other kind of activity you can think about, whether it's a restaurant, without water, restaurants can't function. Without water, industries can't function. Without water, your domestic chores cannot be addressed at home. So water is an important ingredient in terms of driving economic development. We need an um, economic site where industries are active. All right? We have had some attempts here. One of the best attempts was in the 1970s with the Point Lisas. But we know with the challenges with low supplies of, of gas, a lot of companies are working at, at lower levels of production. Some companies have closed in the context of Trinidad and Tobago. So we know, as we have said so many times, in the context of Trinidad and Tobago, we need a diversified economy. One of the fundamentals in terms of our economy is a strong agricultural sector. And the reason that is so fundamental, for many, many years, we have, we have had a food import bill of over $5 billion. 
And any country that is importing food to that extent, where their overall revenues are dropping, will be in serious trouble. So we need full support for agriculture, either on an individual basis, but of course the enabling the environment is always important for government to provide those incentives to help people like who be involved in farming, securing land tenureship so that they can comfortably produce, uh, helping them in terms of security arrangements. Of course, if you're a private investor, a lot of responsibility will fall on you. But of course, if government recognizes the importance of supporting food production, certainly they will provide as much support as is possible. So in a previous video, I spoke about planting a garden, planting in any form, because if you can plant and have staple crops, if you can have um, the acquisition of meat and fish to go in those staple crops, you have a meal, all right? Because you cannot depend on food that is totally imported. Because as we, as we saw with the recent COVID-19 pandemic, with the various logistical challenges, foods were delayed in arriving, plus the cost has skyrocketed. It has skyrocketed to such, a, such an extent that many people are virtually struggling to buy food stuff. That is why in the beginning of the, of the video, I spoke about introducing things like battering again, because many people really why they need to, to have a, an income to survive, the income is not there, all right? When we look at the context of Trinidad and Tobago, the, the, the minimum wage was increased by $3, but that $3 will not make any kind of difference in terms of the buying power of the consumers, given the, the, the levels of increases in food, which in some cases will be as much as a thousand percent and more in some instances. It will be very, very difficult for a $3 increase to make a dent. So you on your own got to take some of the fundamental steps I measure and plus collectively one of the best measures in terms of um, surviving in these times, yes you can open a business if you have the resource, the commitment and the skill set, but remember in opening a business we need, to, we, we need to have people who can buy and if more people are unemployed it means their power to buy will be compromise. So we have to take all of these things into consideration. However, we have to identify needs because as we all know, all business activity is driven by a need and not just by a fancy idea. And if there is a need, if we can establish the, 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 the extent of the demand, then we could proceed now knowing that there is a demand based on a need that exists in a community, whatever it may be. And one of the best models to drive that certainly is the cooperative model. Because in the cooperative model, many benefit, whereas like in a limited liability context, it's just a few benefit in terms of the shareholders. So I'm saying that in communities across the world, in communities in Trinidad and Tobago, there are a lot of natural resources. There are rivers, there are seas, there are forests, there are hiking trails, there, there is uh, in some cases food, all right? There's a culture in the place. We can package all of these things in terms of ensuring that it can bring an income to those who reside in communities. Now, to form a cooperative as it currently exists, you need 12 members to start off, all right? You need to have certain committees established. You need to have a, a bylaws developed. You need to have a, a business plan that will be approved by cooperative officers. Once the approval is granted, then you will now be in a position where your members initially can capitalize the cooperative by buying shares by whatever price that you set up. But of course, for that to have um, value and to leverage, you will need to have, you know, increase and grow your membership where the more people you have is the more capital you can bring into the organization. You can organize projects, you can access grants, and you can find different creative ways of bringing capital into, into your cooperative and look at ways in which you can generate finance. So when I look at communities in my country, such as Toko, such as Mayaro, Cedras, uh, Blantishes, etc., if in each of these communities there is a cooperative, so when people come in to visit through the cooperative, they can be taken on, on tours for a fee. They can be cooked a meal provided by the cooperative. They can partake in a, sh in a show organized by the cooperative, all for a fee. As I said in a recent television interview, if the, the, your area is a fishing community, you can monetize fishing in a different way. In that, fishermen has a very uh, arduous job that they do in terms of providing fish. 
for the various nations the way they, where they do that type of work. And if you can introduce something like experiencing the life of a fisherman, where they organize tours, where you go out and spend hours with them, of course taking uh, cognizance of all of the necessary safety protocols, you go out and experience the life of a fisherman. One, you learn what it is, you may go in greater respect for them, and you also pay a fee. I remember some years ago, uh, some individuals introduced in the Shagaramas area dragon boat races, where a series of people were, were put on this boat and they were all paddling to move it, move it along. All of these things can be done at a charge. So I'm saying we can leverage, we can use our natural resources, monetize it, and use a host of other things to help generate economic activity. We don't have to wait on a government. We can take steps on our own, and then we can make demands of them of providing the necessary support. So whatever resources that exist in any communities, the first step will be taking an inventory. The, the, the next step is to be establishing that there's a, there's a way they can be monetized. Now, of course, we need to do all the necessary marketing, research, and you know, all the kind of spending power, both within the communities and those that visit those communities, how it can be all leveraged to ensure that people have greater access to economic uh, sustenance, to economic mobility, right? I also said in the television interview that every steel band in Trinidad and Tobago, any steel band in any part of the world could form a cooperative. Some steel bands have hundreds of members. And if every member joins the cooperative and buys shares on a regular basis and create activities, certainly it will start small, it wouldn't be, <laughs> it wouldn't be big automatically, but starting and making the effort and building on it certainly can create many avenues to sustain oneself. We just cannot sit back and wait to find a job because the job is not as fast in coming as you may expect it. So building communities, creating them as economic units, doing all of the basic things that I have suggested will go a long, long way in helping us survive. But we must believe we can survive. We must know we will survive. But we must plan for that survival. We will not survive just by saying God is good. God is always good. But the talents that God has placed in us, we must put those talents to work. We must call on those who can support us to make it possible. And we must do our part in ensuring that we, that we, that we survive. I remember the late great Arrow in a song, and one of his taglines is that man was born to survive. Man was born to survive, and I'm saying not only to survive, man was born to prosper. So these are some of the recommendations I have made in terms of surviving these economic times. Once we get together, once we keep calm, once we plan, once we lobby, and once we do the necessary work, we will give ourselves a fighting chance to survive in these turbulent times. I thank you for listening. I thank you for viewing. And of course, you are impressed with the work we are doing, and we thank you for that. We ask you to continue supporting us financially via the account information flashing on the screen. Support us via the YPA link below the video. Support us via our on ongoing courses or by buying one of our books, whether it's conversations, price of 100 TT, 45 EC, or 15 United States dollars, whether it's a tribute to African civilization at $100, Understanding Sierra Games $140 or How Europe Underdeveloped Africa by Dr. Rodney for $150. We know we have and we are doing our part to ensure that we motivate you to fight the good fight and to live life at a different level. Remember, you can call us at 1 8687 or email us at leadership with a difference at gmail.com. We thank you for listening. We thank you for viewing. We thank you for supporting us. And of course, if you are new, subscribe, like, comment on the video. Turn on your bell notification so that you will be the first one who will be notified when a new video is posted. So thanks again and bye till the next presentation. Thank you.